Guys, welcome back. It's the 23rd of March. I'm going to start us off in the greenhouse, so uh, just spin you around very slowly now. I've been doing uh, grafting. I have saved a few back to do a little video, but there's plenty of videos, so I, I didn't want to kind of overdo it on that score. But basically, the ones in the black tub are on Rootstock Variety MM106, that's a semi vigorous rootstock. The ones in the white tub are on M26. These are my own rootstocks. There was a video I did a while ago harvesting how to actually create your own rootstocks and how to, to harvest them. The majority of these are cider apples because I've got a longer term plan to remove all the dwarfing the apples that are on dwarfing rootstocks over on the micro orchard and replace them with um, larger rootstocks. So these have been all bench grafted and um, they're all they've all been done with um, whip and tongue grafts. There's some more in the other greenhouse that I've grafted that were fails from the previous year but I'll, I'll show you those in a minute. So just quickly then this is the second lot of uh, Sturon multi sown onions. You can see they're just coming through. So I brought those up from home. They've been on a heated propagator uh, because they just get more light. And similarly, these uh, these are lettuce Lolo Rosso. And you can see they've been leaning over because we just don't get a lot of light. Uh, we haven't really got a, a decent space, you know, there's lots of light um, for seedlings. So these are the um, red sun, is it, shallots? I don't know if you can see that. Some nice root systems come in there. Can you see those? I'm going to spin them around a bit more. So they're looking great. So what I'm actually going to do is they can go out into the cold frame, start hardening off, because I reckon in another week or so I'll be able to uh, plant those out. And then the idea is to just put these onions inside there with the lid on just to give them a little bit more heat until they're all through so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking in this one I've just got a few um, can I lift it up without it chrysanthemum cuttings I've got a few more to take yet but they they should be all right in there I took a few of the carnation cuttings and I've just popped them in this glass of water base see if I can just get them rooted in water and then pop them up that way but they're still looking that one anyway that's got life in it here's the uh, muscle bear leeks two pots of those so that's pretty much all that's going on in here just now I'll take you over into the other greenhouse okay so these were the other trees that I did uh, Let's say these were grafted last year, but they didn't work out. So I've had another go. Uh, there's a mixture. This this one here with um, well, it's got two grafts on at the moment, and that one is to be grafted. Um, well, hopefully next year. This is actually I'm doing this for Nigel, aka Muddy Boots. Uh, he messaged me a while ago and asked me if I could possibly do a multi-grafted tree for him. I've never actually done that before. So I thought, well, that's a decent challenge to have a go at. So, as far as I recall, he wanted Golden Delicious, so that's that one. He wanted Egremont Russet, which is this one. And then he's got a variety which he really likes called Jazz. I think it's quite a modern apple. But he's saying would he didn't think was um, thick enough so we'll, we'll wait until next year and that's what this branch here is for. Uh, we know that all three varieties are in compatible pollination groups so if these two take and then he's got some cyan wood next year hopefully he'll be able to send me a, a bit or two and then we can get that grafted onto there and then he'll have his uh, multi-grafted tree. Like I say the others are so sorry that's on an M26 so that's a smaller um, than M M106 again I think these are the other are um, 
this is Jumbo. That's that's Jumbo, and this one's Harry Masters Jersey, uh, a cider apple. Jumbo is a very very large apple. Some fruits can weigh up to a pound or more, and it's a dual purpose. It's a good apple. I like it. So that's those. Um, I've got some other graphs to show you over on the orchards and some pear graphs if I can get time to get over. There's a few more chrysanthemums. I've got to take coins off that pot there. And you can see where I've been harvesting them from here. Uh, these are a pink spray. They just need to grow a little bit more, so I'm just going to leave those for another week, 10 days before I take some coins from those. The overwintering lettuce is still doing fantastic. Again, I just keep harvesting leaves off those. In fact, I'll take another lot today. The overwintering beetroot, still solid. No problems with that whatsoever. It's done really great. So recently I had uh, someone leave a comment. I think uh, Anna, she was called. I did a video a couple of years ago um, on taking cuttings of rambling rose. So that was two years ago. I think I took three cuttings. I think I remember saying at the time it wasn't the best time of year. Well, this is one of those cuttings, Anna, if you're watching. This is variety Albertine. So this, in fact, it's it's rooted. You see that? It's rooted through the bottom of the pot. Uh, I think this would flower this year. Um, so I'll have to find a place to try and plant it. I did do some more. I was looking in my diary, spin you around again. I was looking in my gardening diary I kept from last year, and uh, on the 30th of October. I took eight Albertine cuttings, um, so hopefully when I go over to the micro orchard, I was looking at them the other day, they, they seem to be growing well, so I'll show you those. These are the spring cabbage, uh, they're not brilliant, I'll get one or two, you can see there's some bolting on me, they're going to seed, but I might get a few off them, so that'll be okay. Sprouting broccoli is definitely coming now, which is why I've netted it. You can see there some spears starting to form, so I'm really looking forward to that. And again, we've got some, these were given to me, these kale plants. I don't know how well they'll do, but we'll give them a try. So just walking down onto the micro orchard now. It's uh, quite cool today, a maximum about 8 Celsius. I think nighttime temperatures are going down to about four so it's not exactly tropical but we're getting there slowly right here we go I'm on the, I'm at the micro orchard gooseberries are everything's bursting into leaf all right so just here I'm hoping you can see this here's the rose cuttings I'm pretty sure my diary said eight one two three four, five, six, seven, eight. And apart from maybe, although I can see a little shoot there coming out, it looks like they've all, they're all shooting out anyway, so I'm going to do a follow-up on those and see um, how they get on. So we'll, you know, we'll kind of, at some point, over this coming year, I'll dig them up and see what kind of root system they've got and pop them up. But that was, they were taken on October the 30th, 2020. Um, okay, right, let's just have a quick walk around. This rhubarb's really coming on thick and fast now. So much further on than the stuff over on the plot. In fact, it won't be long before I could start harvesting some of that. Maybe another 10 days. Comfrey is coming nice. Some, uh, I don't even know whether those are primrose, I think they're primroses rather than primula. They just self seed. I just want to show you these pear 
aircraft. Um, you can see this this is almost at bud well it's at bud burst really. But okay so there's some here uh, one there see another one there that's two I think I did five altogether these were sent to me from a friend of mine Helen over in Norway that's three four one here five so it was it's a variety called Selena so I'm crossing my fingers if those take then on each tree there will be three pair varieties so there'll be Conference, no, sorry, Williams, uh, Concord, and Selena, which is pretty cool. So, this here is a cobnut tree, bush, whatever you want to call it. And I don't know if you can make that on the camera, but it's a tiny little red flower. It probably won't focus. Just there, there's a tiny little red flower, that's the female flower. I'm going to head back over to the plot because uh, I've actually come down to sow uh, some peas, Monge 2, I do them in um, gutters. So I'm going to walk back over and we'll get on with that. Okay, I'm not going to show the whole thing because I know there's tons of people out there doing it. But basically, I've just got two four foot lengths of standard house guttering, um, half round is it they call it. Here's my seeds, these are what I save Monch to, I save my own seed every year and then I'm just using bog, bog standard multi-purpose so all I'm going to do is just stuff a load of compost into here, firm it down to about an inch from the top give it a real good soaking put the peas in just cover them over and then water it again and then they'll go in the greenhouse that's pretty much it so I'll bring you back Alright, so that's it. You can see I haven't spaced them out of there, just chuck them in to be honest, and then go over again if there's any gaps. You see, I haven't, uh, some people I know get end caps or make pieces of wood to fit. I, I don't bother personally. Um, I find they tend to stay in alright. So I've got another little piece here which I actually do dwarf French beans. You can see I've actually drilled drainage holes in this one. So I'll just go along now and just uh, firm those seeds in just so they're making contact with the damp soil, damp compost then I'll uh, I'll top them up with, you know, put more compost on the top and give them another good watering and we're done so that's it, just topped up I'll just give them another watering And like I say, they're going to uh, they'll go into the greenhouse now, and then I'll probably sow another lot about a month from now, uh, so that there's a bit of a gap, so they don't all, you know what I mean. There's a bit of a crossover, so it just keeps your harvest period going for longer. So this is my coal frame. See in there, the shallots are in there now, they should be fine, just harden them off for a week, get those planted out. So there's the peas, and uh, yeah, so I've got the onions, these are the stew on. I swear to god they've grown since I put them in here <laughs> an hour ago, whatever it was. So I'm going to put the lid down and just hopefully we'll get a little bit more heat just to get them through a bit more and then they're fine, lettuce can withstand pretty cold temperatures as can the uh, radishes. Okay, so the last job before um, they're white, just took some more chrysanthemum cuttings. Uh, I didn't, I haven't even uh, got any hormone rooting powder, so they'll have to take the chance. I've just not been able to get hold of any, but hopefully. We'll see anyway. Do for now. So they can join their pals in this propagator here. So that's pretty much it for now guys. I've got stuff to do at home. As always, 
busy guy at the moment, as I know lots of you all are. Anyway, it feels like uh, cracking on with stuff, and um, hopefully we're all going to have a good season. So, thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. See you in the next one. Bye for now.